my kids, it is now my job to teach you the theory of evolution. Oh, boy. It was thought up by Charles Darwin, and it goes something like this. In 1871, naturalist Charles Darwin proposed that humans and African apes must have shared a common ancestor. He recognized this without the benefit of a fossil record or modern genetic research. Today, thanks to anatomical and molecular studies, we now know that our longest living relative is the African chimpanzee, sharing almost 98% of our same genes. What are your thoughts on human evolution? Well, uh, I'm a biology major, so um, all the evidence seems to support that we descended from apes. Our story of human evolution begins with a divergence from chimpanzees was first recognized between five and seven million years ago. But how similar are we to our primate relatives? Between four and five million years ago, our ancestors started to spend more time in the ground. It is believed climate change played a significant role. As the world became a drier place, many forests thinned to open woodland, in which only some primates adapted to. Around 3.5 million years ago, in what is now Tanzania, a volcanic eruption covered the surrounding landscape with ash. When it rained, the wet ash formed a cement-like substance and recorded the tracks of Australopithecus afarensis, an ancestor of the Homo genus. These provided strong evidence for bipedalism. Walking on two legs involved a whole series of modifications to our skeleton. In humans, the spinal cord comes out of the base of the skull and points downward, rather than coming out of the back of the skull, as it does in other primates. In primitive primates, the pelvis is long and narrow, whereas in humans, it is lower and broader, to centre the torso over the hips. Primates' big toes are positioned to the side of the foot for grasping branches. Uniquely among primates, human big toes are aligned with the other toes, and the heel is longer, creating a platform that supports our weight for walking. As our hands were no longer being used for walking, they became better at manipulating basic tools. The first stone tools dated about 2.5 million years ago and were found in caves. They were used for hunting and butchering meat and were something similar to this, with one sharp edge along the side. This basic stone tool reigned for almost a million years until the development of more sophisticated tools, such as spearheads, axes, and blades. At 2.4 million years, we see the first appearance of the genus uh, Homo, uh, which diverges into several branches, such as Homo erectus, Homo ergaster, uh, Neanderthals, and ourselves, Homo sapiens. One of the most hotly debated issues in paleoanthropology focuses on the origins of modern humans. Approximately 100,000 years ago, the world was occupied by a morphological diverse group of hominids. In Africa and the Middle East, there were Homo sapiens. In Asia, there were Homo erectus. And in Europe, Homo neanderthalensis. However, by 30,000 years ago, this taxonomic diversity vanished, and humans everywhere had evolved into the anatomically and behaviorally modern form. Why this happened has caused huge deliberation among two main schools of thought. The multi-regional and recent out of Africa hypothesis. The multi-regional hypothesis contends that archaic hominid forms such as Homo erectus and Neanderthalensis, as well as the more recent Homo sapien forms, evolved worldwide to the diverse populations of modern Homo sapiens sapiens through gene flow between the geographically different groups. So now, let's explain the Out of Africa hypothesis. A major branch on the genus Homo is Homo erectus, which is believed to be the first human to leave Africa around 500,000 years ago to inhabit both Europe and Asia. In Europe, Homo erectus evolved into the code adapted Neanderthals, who in times of interglacial periods throughout the Pleistocene could inhabit further north. 
The first appearance of our species, Homo sapiens, is believed to have occurred 300,000 years ago in Africa. Thus, Homo neanderthalus, Homo erectus, and archaic Homo sapiens all coexisted until Homo sapiens migrated out of Africa between 60 and 40,000 years ago, replacing Homo erectus in Asia about 50,000 years ago and Homo neanderthalus in Europe 30,000 years ago. So, why are Homo sapiens so successful? It is currently thought that one key feature could be the ability to speak, as it, we know from fossil evidence from our ancestors that the larynx was situated much higher up in the throat region. Which prevented the sharing of technology, ideas, and most importantly, the development of societies. A story is still incomplete, as the evidence that exists is fragmented and difficult to read. However, new discoveries deepen our understanding, and a single find can raise many new questions. Monkey, and that made you. So there you go. It's by open word, word, word land. <laughs>